So hello everybody, we are back from the break. I hope you enjoyed that amazing music. I haven't picked out the music yet, so I hope it was amazing. <laughs> um, I'm your host, Colin McIsaac, and as always, I'm joined by Alex Plant. Hello. And Benley Moreau. Well, what's going on, everyone? Uh, so we are here to discuss the new Nintendo 3DS. Uh, of course, this just launched last Friday. Um, so we have all had some time with it, uh, varying amounts of time. But uh, uh, Alex is going to lead us on this segment. So do you want to take the reins here? Sounds good. So uh, new Nintendo 3DS was announced last summer-ish. Um, and I know a lot of us probably had reactions back when it was announced. So to give us some context to how we feel about it now... Let's let. How about each of us go over what we thought of it when it was first announced? I didn't really think much of it. I thought it was cool that there was a C stick, but I mean that's kind of it. Like it just looked like another 3DS, basically, to me. And that's kind of how I feel currently too. Did you think when it was announced that they were going to have this push for unique games that can only be done with the better processing power? Well, see, Did that's you think interesting be better because processing power? so. Well, th- when they announced it, they announced that there would be better processing power, and they announced that Xenoblade Chronicles 3D would only be available for new Nintendo 3DS. And fast forward, here we are, ab- I would say about six months probably it's been since they first announced it, and still, Xenoblade Chronicles 3D is the only game that we know of that's exclusive to new Nintendo 3DS. Um, I'm sure there will be more in the future, but I don't think there are going to be that many more. Yeah, that's that's something I was kind of hoping to see, is that they would support it with a lot of exclusive games just because otherwise i mean both from their perspective and our perspective i just spent two hundred dollars on a new handheld i want to get my money's worth and if they're going to release any exclusive games on it i feel like they should just go all in on it otherwise there there's there's just not much incentive for people to go out and buy it and then they're limiting greatly limiting the install base if they yeah. only have, you know, a few games on there. Well, so I wonder, uh, they have an interesting hurdle ahead of them uh, in balancing the install base of the 3DS versus the new Nintendo 3DS. And because obviously they want to maximize software sales by making it compatible with uh, with the older models of the Nintendo 3DS. But they also want to maximize hardware sales of the new Nintendo 3DS by making software that's only available for it. So I'm wondering what their strategy might be to balance that. Uh, you know, we have Xenoblade Chronicles 3D. I'm wondering if we'll maybe have more remakes of Wii uh, or GameCube games that are only compatible with the new Nintendo 3DS. Um, but I, I don't know that they'll make any exclusive original games. Uh, that, I think, is still a question for me. It's interesting to see how it's done in Japan so far, because the headline game, I would say, for a new 3DS is still Monster Hunter 4. Uh, which is, is that you know, only compatible a game for that, new 3DS? It's not only compatible, but it's uh, the addition of the C stick for hardcore Monster Hunter players is probably it's demonstrated actually that it's enough to get them to purchase new hardware. That's not the case here though, where Monster Hunter isn't this like big phenomenon, right? Because they they have you know the, Monster Hunter can't do that for them here. Right. It's like there's there's no killer app, really, for a new 3DS at launch. I mean, you could say Majora's Mask, but that's not really a new 3DS. That's not a new 3DS killer app. That's a 3DS, nice uh, software for existing owners to pick up, not a killer app. So, I mean, I'm definitely impressed with the uh, new processing power, like launching Smash Bros or switching to Majora's Mask. Fr- like, like, switching even from full-fledged software is a total breeze with the new system. But that and the quicker downloads of software are really, I think, the two main strengths of the new Nintendo 3DS. Uh, there are some other niceties, the what they call super stable 3D. I just call normal 3D. Um, <laughs> but, uh, that, you know, that's, that's nice. It's not quite, I don't think, as uh, mind-blowing as some people have tried to tell me that it is. Um, you know, it's well, very did nice. Did you use the 3D much on the original? Uh, I did. I've been playing Smash Bros. and Pokemon a lot for the most part in the uh, in recent months. But, you know, when I was playing Kid Icarus, when I was even playing Fire Emblem, um, playing Luigi's Mansion, Ocarina of Time, there are a lot, a lot of 3DS games that I played. And I almost, I, I religiously used the 3D. So my experience so far with the, the 3D feature of the new 3DS, all I've played on it is uh, Majora's Mask. I picked up a couple other games, but I haven't really had time to dig into them. But... For normal gameplay, I think the 3D is a lot more stable, and I can, you know, my, move my handheld to the left or right a little bit without so much trouble, or move my head back and forth, not so much trouble. Very stable. One really horrendous problem I've had 
every single cutscene in Majora's Mask 3DS looks awful to me in 3D. Like, I'm just, it's blurry, and there's ghosting, and it's, it's like stuff is jumping out of the screen and poking me in the eye. It like, worse than it was on the original 3DS. And I'm not sure if that's just a problem with the cutscenes in Majora's Mask, because I haven't played any of their games yet, but, I mean, gameplay has been absolutely great with the 3D on. I just don't know why the cutscenes the cut seem so bad to me. Um, so we've kind of been digging into this already, but what do we think of the hardware? Uh, not just from a functionality perspective, but just from an overall hardware experience perspective. I, I guess I'll jump in. This is my first time owning an XL model. Uh, I previously was on the original 3DS with all of its fun angles and crevices. Uh, so uh, <laughs> Alex uh, really hates the old 3DS. I really hate the old 3DS. I I liked it for like the first couple months that I owned it. And then I realized as I started playing it more and had more games than just Ocarina of Time, which anytime I play Ocarina of Time is going to be a good time. So I didn't, I didn't notice the flaws then. But it, it's really uncomfortable to hold for like any prolonged period of time. And now that I have this XL model, which it, it might be virtue of the XL, but I think it, it has a lot to do as well with how much smoother the new 3DS feels. It's a lot more comfortable. Uh, I played uh, to 100% Majora's Mask over the weekend. and You guys work fast. I, I have the game practically <laughs> memorized. So even with changes, it was, it was really quick. Uh, but I was playing for a long time, and it, I couldn't put it down. I didn't want to put it down. Whereas if I were playing on old 3DS, I probably would have wanted to put it down. Uh, so the the main thing that I think of this thing now that it's been released is God, Wah! they so screwed up the system transfer process. <laughs> it's so bad. I would have gladly. Which method paid. did you use? I used. Ugh, I tried to use the PC transfer method. Uh, okay, um, I tried. I see. I see. Yeah, which you know that's been advertised as like the hardest, but the, by far the fastest. Right. Um, and it by all the guides like online, it looked like it was pretty easy. But <laughs> well, the hard Nintendo, part seemed to be getting your SD card out of the thing. No, that's not even the hard part. That is kind wow. of difficult. For those who don't know, you have to unscrew the back of the 3DS. You have to then open it with the stylus, not with your fingers. You have to use the stylus to pry it open. It's going to make these large, loud cracking sounds that are going to scare scare you silly. Um, but they're they're for whatever reason they're normal. Um, so you have to do all this, this stuff to take out the SD card. And if you are someone like me who has five gigabytes of data on your SD card, the four gigabyte SD card that they package with the new Nintendo 3DS XL is not going to work. So you have to, you have two options. You can transfer via SD card or you can, you can transfer normally and select, download a select few titles to your new 3DS manually. I didn't want to do that because I had a lot of digital software and because, you know, I wanted to upgrade the size of the SD card anyway at some point uh, so that I could fit more content on there at once. But the system transfer process requires you to back up, to, to rather back up the SD card on your old 3DS to your computer and then put it on the new SD card that has like the 32 whatever and replace that into your new 3DS before you start the system transfer process at all. And the instructions of the system transfer process do not tell you that. So I did not do that. Then the system transfer process gets to a point where it says, you're going to have to swap your memory cards at some point or your SD cards at some point. And it was, it was this confusing nightmare. I got basically to the end of the system transfer process with my four gigabyte SD card in the new Nintendo 3DS. I, ha I was on the phone with customer support for like almost an hour and a half trying to figure out how the heck do I prevent my data from just getting deleted and com remaining completely inaccessible. And this is specifically because the system fails to warn you that you have to do that before starting the system transfer process. Not during, not after, but before. So it was this whole nightmare and it really, it really would not have been so bad if Nintendo's 3DS digital rights management was not just such another nightmare of its own. Uh, because what was at stake here was not that I wouldn't have my save game data. That's, that would be f very frustrating. But what was also at stake here was I wouldn't have $250 worth of games that I've paid for. I would not have any access to those anymore. Right, because the licenses would have been deleted from your original right. 3DS and they would right. not have been transferred to your new one. Right, and I have three backups of this... 3DS data on my computer and even though I have that and I have a Nintendo network ID and it's registered with like Club Nintendo and all this stuff that proves my identity 
despite all of that, they have no way of restoring your licenses, your save game data, uh, your your downloaded game data, if it's if something somehow goes awry. And there's so much that can go awry. And even even if you've taken all the measures you possibly can as an owner of this digital content to ensure that you have it safely backed up, you can't restore that backed up data if something right. goes awry. Wow, that does sound yeah. unfun. Oh yeah, I'm I, I'm still just talking about it is getting me mad again because it really this should not be an issue. This this issue should have been solved in 2011 when they launched the original 3DS. Now it's just even worse because they've launched the new 3DS with a flawed system transfer process, which then exacerbates the flaws of their digital rights management. And I'm sure that transfer process is the same on Wii U, I would say. Not exactly the same, but the general gist of it is the same. Even though Wii U has, seems to have had Nintendo Network IDs built in from the start. A quick comment to that point. On Wii U, you have to have two Wii U consoles present at that time. Yeah. Which is absurd. If you're yeah. gonna if you're if you're trying to do that if you're trying to do that in the first place, it means that you don't have your old Wii U anymore. Probably. Like, we need to have a separate podcast and... just for Colin to be upset. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have it uh, at the beginning of the week. It'll be the uh, if I, I if I, I had more we'll time it. to still do that like news recap show, I would rip Nintendo a new one for this kind of stuff because it, it shouldn't be happening anymore. Yeah, and, and I'd say that too. Even though I didn't do the I didn't do the SD card swap, I did the the uh, wireless transfer. But you know, that's still stuff that could go wrong during that. And it right. takes forever. Right. It took me at least an hour and fifteen. I t- I know a, a writer here, Elijah. It took him two and a half hours. Uh, I only I only had the original I think the original SD card in my old 3ds, so it I didn't have that much on there. That's still that's why why do I have to do that? Why can't I just have my licenses and have the confidence right. that I can just re-download stuff? I mean, I right. and it's especially confounding the that they have this whole system in place because they're trying to encourage digital software sales. Uh, with digital sales, they don't need to spend any money on production. They don't need to spend any money shipping them out to retailers. The retailers don't. Uh, take any cut of it they make 100 percent of the profit off of digitally downloaded games so they have every reason not to put people through this this stuff colin yeah please understand <laughs> <laughs> it's true i'm though, not like, sure i do ben they should be sure incentivized to have this great customer experience because right. they know that if they keep their customers their customers will come back for their next device right and their next device but if they don't have happy customers who want to transfer their data over to their next system, who want to buy data digitally in the first place, then it's not going to happen. Right. I mean, this, well, this, honestly, this experience has has frustrated me to the point where I'm not sure that I would, if they come out with another new kind of 3DS, I don't think I will upgrade because this is such a nightmare. Uh, So bringing this back around, uh, system transfer issues aside uh let's let's get back to the important thing which is the games what kind of future do we see for this thing what do we think nintendo will do with it what kind of games do we think they'll put on it you know initially i thought that they would really support this with a lot of exclusive titles but just reading a lot about um iwata talking about nintendo's comeback strategy and putting cheap more cheap games on 3ds and remakes and ports and finding ways to cut development costs i don't know that they're really focused on expanding the 3DS brand anymore, and I don't know if they're going to really make new Nintendo 3DS a big focus of you know giving it exclusive titles. I think you know this this might just be sort of a, a bonus system. You know, people should upgrade to this because you get extra features and so on and so forth. I don't know that they'll they'll really support this with very many exclusive outside of like what you said earlier. Maybe we'll get some more like GameCube or or Wii remakes that are. It's exclusive like the 110% percent run. <laughs> yeah, basically. I kind of feel like. 3DS software has peaked. Um, I, it doesn't really sound like they have uh, very many more clear plans in the pipeline. You know, we have Codename Steam coming out. We have Xenoblade Chronicles 3D coming out. Um, but beyond that, it doesn't really look like there are going to be any more games. I'm sure we'll get another Pokemon uh, in 2015 um, and 2016 and 2017. But, you know, it looks, it looks like they've gotten all their major brands that they want to get on the 3DS already on the 3ds and it doesn't really sound like they're gonna keep keep pushing it terribly hard uh you know i think i think ben's right i think it sounds like it's mostly gonna be remakes uh smartphone game upgrades um and ports from here on out uh maybe one or two new uh 
original games, but I just don't really see 3DS software going many interesting places in the future. And that applies for all 3DS models, not just the new Nintendo 3DS. XL, Amiibo, Line, Superboy, Wii U. Yeah, I think I'm inclined to agree with you both. Uh, although I, I would have said the same thing about 3DS last year, where, you know, it seems like it's the end of the line. Well, but what have we gotten since then? We've gotten Smash Bros. and Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Well, Smash Bros. It. was confirmed before. Uh, I guess Omega Ruby was kind of... I mean, people expected it, but, but it, Remakes wasn't, and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't announced in 2013. Um, and then Majora's Mask actually came out. That's true. I thought but, they'd forgotten um, about it, honestly. Really? Um, yeah. I was positive. Major- I was just waiting for the when, not the if. The, the radio silence for most of 2014 was was a little odd to me. But and see, that's the thing. It's been radio wait. silence, even even though we've got we got the announcement of Majora's Mask, um, of Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, of Codename Steam. Most of the uh, the Pokemon and Codename Steam were announced early in the year, by the way. But even though we've gotten a couple of new announcements since then. It's been mostly silent on the 3DS front, and I just don't see it picking back up. I think if they were going to try to uh, keep 3DS going strong, I think they were they would never have left this big dead space in 3DS content that they currently have. Um, so, and, and, and let's be clear, dead space is one thing. You know, we've had a couple months of Wii U software gaps uh, here and there, but for the 3DS, we haven't really had anything A, original, and B, substantial uh, in a long, long time. Because Smash Bros. had a bigger and better version on the Wii U, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire were a remake that were just running from the X and Y engine anyway, and um, Majora's Mask and Xenoblade Chronicles are both remakes. And that all that leaves is Codename Steam, which they're not pushing very hard. No, they're not. And I play the demo. I'm not sure that they should. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. fun. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going right. to pay full price for it. Right. I'd pay $15 for it. I think I think Codename Steam has potential to be a great franchise, but the, the current 3DS game just isn't there. Um, but that's a discussion for another day. One thing that I think will determine where this thing goes, where the Nintendo 3DS goes, is how long it's going to be till their next platform actually debuts. Mm-hmm. Because I th- I've noticed that a lot of the time when they take the wind out of their sails on a platform, it's because they're preparing software for some other platform. So you, you probably, you might have noticed that 3DS software dipped before the Wii U launch also. And Wii U likewise uh, took a quick dip uh, when they were uh, about to bolster the uh, 3DS lineup in 2013, you know, with the new Zelda game and stuff like that. As long as they're not feverishly preparing software for their new platform, I think it's possible that we could see sort of a resurgence now that after their current round of Wii U titles is out the door. Uh, the question is, when are we going to see announcements? And I don't think, I think we we have to wait and see what comes out of E3 before we make any calls. Right. But uh, They may, may have an Nintendo well Direct be right. or two before then too. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I just think it'd be really tragic if they drop this actually substantial refresh not just a size or form factor refresh and never really did anything with it anything so we've talked about remakes we've talked about uh ports we've talked about a bunch of ways that nintendo could monetize their existing fans i mean amiibo is in there uh so i wonder if it's gonna turn out that new 3ds is really just the here why don't you buy more of our stuff existing 3ds owners platform rather than a hi you're a new 3ds owner try new nintendo 3ds uh i don't think yeah. it's, i don't think it's going to be a push for wider adoption it's going to be a push for getting people to buy into more stuff yeah i mean i hate to say it but i i agree with you i think it really is just sort of a, a quick cash grab for i don't i don't want to say cash grab because that has all these certain negative sorts of connotations but i do definitely think i i do think though that this is sort of a last um last hurrah for the nintendo 3ds and that uh you know they're just trying to squeeze out whatever money of it that they can from the system and hopefully you know provide good value in the process to people hopefully really like it. hopefully <laughs> so far so far i don't know but we seem to be skeptical we'll see yeah 
anyway, uh, it sounds like uh, it sounds like we've all got kind of mixed impressions. We seem to like the hardware for the most part, but uh, right. I mean, if, if you don't, don't have a 3DS like yet, going. if you've been thinking of picking one up, let me be clear: the new 3DS is definitely what to get. Um, but well, they if even you already, introduced if, it at the same price as the original XL. Mm-hmm. So, but you them. know, if if you already have one. An upgrade may or may not be worth your time and money, just kind of depending, I guess, on how much time and money you have, how much you value the faster download speeds, how much you value the faster processing speeds, being able to launch a game quicker, stop a game quicker. Um, The C-Stick, which, by the way, the C-Stick has been really, really nice in Majora's Mask. I agree. I mean, it's not particularly useful, but it works well. Oh, I I disagree on that. I I use the C-Stick more than I use the A button. (laughs) What? (laughs) I, I mean, just that can't do it on an N64 but... remake. So, everybody, thank you very much for listening. That is the end of this week. But if you if you are just catching up with us, you can catch last week's episode at iTunes, Podbean. You can see it on YouTube. Uh, so be sure, if you like this podcast, to subscribe either on iTunes or YouTube. iTunes, you will get it on Wednesday. YouTube, you will get the the recap discussion on Thursday, and you will get the discussion 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 on friday friday be sure if you like the podcast again to head to itunes and leave a review it really helps us with visibility we really really appreciate it you can go to gamnesia.com for more news uh more news on other aspects of the video game industry you know we got microsoft sony we got we've got a couple mobile things um and of course more nintendo news that we didn't have the time to discuss here on the podcast today and be sure to send us questions. You can send us questions to colin at gamnesia.com uh, currently. We will be holding a question and answer block when we get enough questions uh, that we can fill an entire block with. <laughs> so uh, we will be doing those as well. Be sure to send us questions and also feedback. If you, you, know, you, have, something, if you have something to say about the podcast, please say it. And uh, we, will, we will embrace it with open ears, open arms, open hearts, open legs. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we hope you have a wonderful week. Yeah.